Um, so, um, so what is the world of the cyber physical systems? I consider cyber physical system these systems which are at the intersection of three domains, which are very well known and very well studied: control, communication, and computing. Uh, why are we interested in, in these systems? Uh, in the last uh, 15, 20 years, uh, networking has experienced an, inc an incredible growth. Uh, the advances in uh, sensing technologies, the advancing in uh, communication technology and in computation allow us to uh, embed into physical spaces um, an IT infrastructure that will help us sensing spaces, sensing physical systems, estimating the state of the systems, detecting anomalies and changes in the system, and then making decisions and controlling the system. Think about buildings. Uh, buildings are, I think, with respect to the technology that we have these days, are still um, are systems which are very um, primitive. Right? If you think about a car, it's a great system. We know everything about a car. There are diagnostics. We know how much we consume per second instantly. In buildings, we know nothing. We don't even know what performance of a building means. Right? I think um, given this, and given that buildings consume 40% of our electric bill in the US, um, there is a real uh, opportunity of making spaces. Buildings is just an example of them, smart. To make them safer, to make them more energy efficient. Okay, and for this, we'll use control theory. We'll use communication. So systems will systems are large. They're made of many components. Think about again a building, thousands and thousands of sensors. We want the sensors to be networked, to report information, so that we have a complete view of the state of um, of a system. And then computation is. Uh, the, the third important important component. So uh, for this reason, I'm working on several projects that could be considered cyber physical in some sense. So there is this integration of cyber component, IT infrastructure into physical spaces. So we're working on modeling analysis and design of, um, of building systems. Um, we are working with, uh, um, with the intelligent workplace uh, in the architecture. Uh, domain and uh, sensor Andrew has several deployments already. Uh, everybody knows what sensor Andrew is. This is project um, aimed at making uh, CMU the most sensed campus. We have already several hundreds, if not thousands, of sensors spread around, and some of them are used for uh, for uh, for building mon management and monitoring. Uh, second project is on energy management for data centers. Again, the, the focus here is uh, energy efficiency. Data centers in 2000, as of August 2007, EPA said, claimed that 1.5% of the electric bill is due to data centers, which corresponds to 5 billion. Uh, it's not a big percentage, uh, although it's, a, it's definitely an underestimate, but it's the growth that is, uh, is worrisome. They are, this is doubling every four years as computation moves from your laptop and computation and storage moves from your laptop to, uh, to data centers. Uh, think about Gmail when you want your, instead of backing up your system these days, you just send yourself an email to, uh, to Gmail to make sure that your, uh, your files are safe. Uh, I'm working on water distribution networks. I claim that water is going to be an important, uh, very important resource, uh, just as much as energy. And uh, the, the, these days, um, I've seen it already in, uh, in systems like naval ships. Uh, valves are becoming smart. They sell valves with Ethernet ports, and they are completely automated. So I think uh, I extend this concept to water distribution networks. You could, uh, there are parts of, of the world where, um, at least I know in Italy there are cities where f at least 40% of the water that goes through uh, an aqueduct is lost, right? If we have just a few sensors well placed and communication, we could detect leaks. Uh, from, a, from a security uh, stand, standpoint, if uh, valves are smart, we put other sensors. We could detect whether uh, there has been an attack and some contaminant has been thrown in. And uh, we can act accordingly by just deviating the flow uh, where it doesn't hurt people. And then uh, I think there's a more fundamental question. Is what are the software architectures for cyber and physical system? How do we put together physical and cyber component? How do we compose them? How do we analyze? How we, do we use this analysis in order to drive design? Okay, 
So what are the issues? As we put together uh, control, communication, and computation, many issues uh, arise. For instance, the, all the analysis that we are using, I'm a control person in, in terms of background, and in control theory, let me just take this example, it's a very um, well-studied field. It has a very, um, very nice and uh, uh, very precise formulation, and there are lots of results that can be used in this field. As soon as you put together communication and computation, the, the models do not hold true anymore. So you need to develop, um, to develop new methodologies in order to analyze systems that are not just control systems, but that integrate also uh, issues of communication and, and computation. So the, if, you, if you guys ever took the, um, any feedback control class, the classic example is the inverted pendulum, for instance. Right? If you take the inverted pendulum, the way it's set up, the, there, there are sensors which are connected via serial port to a computer. The computer computes, uh, reads the sensor, computes a control input. Again, uh, through a serial port, it sends the control input to the cart in order to move in the pendulum. So this paradigm does not hold true anymore. Okay? Systems are spatially distributed. Communication goes through um, communication networks. And these days, communication networks are not dedicated. Okay? So you cannot abstract away the existence of it and say, okay, this is reliable enough. We use Wi-Fi, we use 15.4, we use Ethernet. And these are general purpose networks which are not designed for this purpose and which are shared by different applications. So th there's a lot of uncertainty around it. And if we try to design a system which does not uh, take this uncertainty into account, I assure you that results are going to be disastrous. Okay? Uh, so the, today, what I'm going to talk about are I'm going to talk about sensor networks, and in particular, energy constraints. If we deploy all our sensors around campus, we don't want to go around and change batteries every couple of weeks. We would like these systems to last about 10 years, um, or or at least the lifetime of the battery. Uh, I'm going to talk about cross-layer design. So how do you do um, how do you design control and communication at um, at the same time. And then I'm going to give you some results on, on the, how robust our systems to uncertainties in the computation and the communication. Uh, finally, there's an issue of, of security. Um, what if uh, in, our, in our system some of the components get hijacked? They start either dropping packets, they start uh, corrupting uh, a sensor measurement. And so, um, and so provide us with wrongful information or with absence of information. Okay, is there any question on the, on the setup? Okay, please interrupt me at any time if you, if you, if you have some urge, urgent question. Okay, let me talk first about uh, the sensing part, okay? So we have, uh, th there are several issues with sensing. So consider systems which are very, um, uh, distributed and, um, and and very large scale, okay? So it is infeasible at any given time um, to collect all the information from all the sensors. Think of, again about a building, okay? 10,000, 20,000 sensors. Okay? We don't want to collect all the information. First of all, because we don't need it. Uh, second of all, because uh, it would be terribly expensive to do and it would take a long time. So since we have to take decisions uh, following our, uh, the reading of the sensors, then also there is a, there is a timing constraints that kicks in. 